Hello and welcome to another TLDR EU video. Just over a week ago, we briefed you on the national elections held in the Netherlands, introducing you to the many parties contending and their leaders, alongside the prospect of an impossible coalition puzzle to find a majority. Well, although it's not 100% confirmed, the results are essentially in, and spoiler alert, as many predicted, Prime Minister Mark Rutte's VVD have won, which means that he's now headed towards 15 years as Prime Minister of the Netherlands, and at the centre of EU politics. But there's a lot more to the result than this simple win. So in this video, we'll talk you through the full results of the national elections, who outperformed expectations, and what the new governing coalition could look like as Rutter tries to work out the coalition puzzle. If you want more news from us, then you should check out TLDR Global. Over there, we cover topics from all around the world and explain what you've missed. In fact, this morning, we're putting out the Global Summary, our weekly rundown of the biggest global news events of the last week, one of which is the Dutch election. Check out the Global Summary and TLDR Global by clicking the link in the description. So, let's dive straight into the results. The 2021 parliamentary elections, which took place last week, changed the composition of Parliament from this to this. As you can see, it's the VVD that has once again claimed this election victory, growing from 33 seats to 35. The VVD's campaign has clearly succeeded by focusing on Mark Rutter's capacities as PM. It seems that mainly his response to the COVID pandemic and his experience as the head of government may have resulted in the overwhelming support for him. This is not to say that Rutter wasn't attacked by his opponents, though, questioning him on his party's role on healthcare, the administration's transparency, and the criticism of his recent COVID measures, especially the large child benefit scandal that happened under his watch, which may have caused many innocent parents to be pushed into great debts erroneously, which turned out to be quite a sticky point at several points during the campaign. But it seems that in the end, nothing really sticks to Rutter, and that he's rightly earned his international nickname, Teflon Mark. The VVD aren't the only important party here though. As expected, and as is always the case in the Netherlands, no party got a majority. Which means that despite his victory, Rutter now needs to find his allies and create a large enough coalition from the remaining parties. As such, the race for second is always important, and it looked like it was a mere close finish this time round, but ended up being quite a landslide. D66 performed exceptionally well, outscoring polling that granted them a maximum of 19 seats, with them ending up grabbing 23 and becoming the second largest party. This puts them six seats ahead of the right-wing nationalist PVV, who ended up in third place with 17, and the conservative CDA, who got 15. As a result, D66 now have some serious leverage in the coalition negotiations. Sigrid Karg managed to appeal to a lot of the electorate and rally voters from almost every corner of the political spectrum, promising a clear alternative to the VVD's neoliberal tradition, combining an economic approach of restraint liberalism with a decidedly progressive agenda and greater public spending. As is always the case with elections, there were not only winners but also losers. Among those, we can count the PVV, who performed considerably worse than expected, reading in just 17 seats, where polls projected them more than 20. Undoubtedly, the PVV suffered from the rise of Yar 21 and Forum for Democracy on the right. Yar 21 appealed to the right-wing conservative electorate who didn't like the radical extremes of the PVV, while the Forum for Democracy ate away at the PVV's electorate that's staunchly against the government's Covid restrictions. However, Yar 21, the more moderate offshoot of Forum for Democracy, was probably more successful than anyone expected, entering Parliament as a new party with four seats. The Forum for Democracy's anti-Covid restrictions campaign resonated well, recovering them towards eight seats. It will be interesting to see if Yar 21 can find a way to introduce the right-wing conservative voice into a government coalition as they set out to do, and if Forum for Democracy can keep its political momentum alive when the clouds of the Covid pandemic finally clear. This round of elections also weren't one to remember for the CDA. 
Whereas before the campaign, the Minister for Finance, Volker Hoekstra, seemed ready to open fire against the VVD and start his pursuit on Mark Rutter, during the campaign, support for him seemed to crumble. Some blame this on his inexperience in TV debates and performing on the national stage. Hoekstra certainly did struggle during the debates, for example when the Greens leader corrected Hoekstra on the figures in his own party's plans. A lot of commentators also pointed out that when Hoekstra was asked a question, he just somehow never really gave an answer. Whatever it was, the CDA dropped to just 15 seats, losing four, and shrinking to levels almost as low as 2012, when the CDA secured its greatest loss in history. The final loser of this election is actually a group of losers, and that's essentially the entire political left. The Socialist Party dropped from 14 to 9, the Greens lost 6 of their 14 seats, falling to 8, and the Labour Party managed to recover no seats, following their greatest loss in history in 2017, stalling on the same number again at just 9. Not even the Animal Party managed to grow significantly, growing just one seat to 6, which isn't great when their initial prospects looked a lot better. All of this bodes poorly for the future of the leftist parties, all of whom put together are now smaller than the VVD. Clearly, some bold plan for the future is needed, as the parties on the political left are desperately in need of re-identifying themselves to the public. So, having looked at all the preliminary results, let's have a go at the coalition puzzle. It's not looking like it's going to be a quick or easy puzzle to work out, despite the fact that that's what Rutter said he would want it to be. Perhaps he's already trying to prevent any blame from failed negotiations sticking to him. Anyway, as it stands, the current governing coalition of the VVD, D66, CDA and CU stands at 78 seats, which would be enough for a new coalition. That's easier said than done though, because last time it took 225 days to bring together the progressive D6 and the conservative CDA and CU and some contentious medical ethics topics like euthanasia were condemned to the freezer, as parties were unwilling to budge at the time but didn't want talks to fail either. And where D66 didn't have much leverage last time, clearly they're in a position of much greater strength this time round, with their almost historic victory and the loss of the CDA. The VVD will undoubtedly try and bring together the same four parties, but it's quite likely that the D66 will not agree to a policy of picking things up where the previous government left them. D66 simply won't want to disappoint their voters who flocked to Karg's party because of their divergence from the Conservatives on climate, agricultural policy and the medical ethics questions. So imagining that D66 say no to Rutter's existing coalition. In that case, the VVD would be in a difficult spot. Although the VVD itself is very large, its counterparts on the right just aren't anymore. Granted, the PVV is still a large force on the right, but Rutter has consistently ruled out any cooperation with the party, because Rutter's of the opinion that they can't be trusted. When in 2012, the first Rutter cabinet with the CDA and condoned support from the PVV had to negotiate a second set of austerity measures in the wake of the financial crisis, Wilders walked away from talks. So it's clear that Rutter is highly unlikely to go back on his promise to never work with the PVV again. And on top of Rutter's resentment is also the issue of the PVV's most extreme anti-Islam agenda. So without the D66, the VVD is out of friends on the right and the centre. This means that D66 might be able to force the VVD to make new friends. For example, the VVD may try and persuade the D66 into a coalition of VVD, D66, CDA and Volt. So far we haven't mentioned Volt, but Volt is a new entrant into the Dutch Parliament, and they did surprisingly well, reeling in three seats. Volt is the Dutch version of the pan-European party of the same name that's acting in the European Parliament, and as you might expect, they're heavily in favour of the EU and bear a lot of similarities to D66. The problem with this coalition, however, is the great political divergence between D66 and the CDA. The former has grown and the latter declined, so D66 may be in a stronger position to refuse too many concessions to the Conservative CDA. 
And as we mentioned before, the differences between the two are greater than ever this time. So while the VVD may want the CDA in a government, it's by no means a given that D66 or the CDA will even come to an agreement. If this fails too, which it very well may, the VVD seems to be a bit out of options. At this point, D66 may try and persuade one of the leftist parties to join. It would most likely have to be the Labour Party, which is the most centrist of the groups on the left. However, the VVD, D66 and Labour together only have 67 seats, which clearly isn't enough. Plus, the leftist parties seem to be backing each other up a bit, with the Greens and Labour appearing to have entered some sort of gentleman's agreement not to enter a coalition without the other one's involvement. So the VVD would have to make even more concessions and go even further left by accepting the Greens into this coalition. Yet yeah, even this wouldn't be enough. The Greens only have 8 seats, so that would bring the total to 75, which is irritatingly one seat too few. The leftist parties might plead for the addition of SP, but they have consistently ruled out working with the VVD. Also, the differences between the VVD and the Animal Party aren't exactly insignificant either, so this option also doesn't look great. Perhaps this is where Volt can play a significant role. Volt has three seats, so if they can be persuaded to come on board, that would mean a coalition of 78, which is enough. However, if it comes to this, you can be sure that the VVD will have tried everything in their power to try for an alternative. A coalition of VVD, P66, Labour, the Greens and Volt is a heavily progressive grouping, and probably too leftist for the VVD. And by this point, the VVD might have become sick of the D66's refusal to even try continuing coalitions with the CDA and CU. This means that the VVD might be willing to instead go for another round of elections, placing as much blame on the D66 as possible in an attempt to pull more voters and, and damage D66's base. This is a risky bet though, and it might greatly backfire should Karg manage to boomerang the blame game back on Rutter, with a message probably along the lines of the Dutch having enough of Rutter's same old agenda. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. These may be exceptional times, but a second round of elections is incredibly rare and would only happen in exceptional circumstances. Such a scenario does not seem to be in line with Rutter's habit for forging coalitions and deals in even dire circumstances, and he'll use all of the experience he has in negotiations before calling it quits and asking for new elections. That said, let the puzzle begin. Be sure to comment your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.